namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa okay well everybody meditate for a time being just close your eyes and focus on your breath Know when your breath is going in, know when it's going out. As for any other thoughts, you can just let them go right now. Clean your mind out. Just stay here with the sensation of the breath coming in, going out. Notice where you feel it in the body. And notice if it's comfortable. It's not comfor if it's not comfortable, you can change. You can make it longer or shorter, faster, slower, heavier, lighter. Try to see what kind of breathing feels best for the body right now. Give your mind some grounding right here. We're here for Songkran, which is the Thai festival for New Year. Actually, in Thailand, they have four New Years. They have January 1st, they have Chinese New Year, there's an old Thai, Thai New Year, and now there's Songkran. This is the fourth time they get. You got to start the New Year in, Thai, in Thailand. And as with every new year, it's a good time to stop and reflect, take stock of the past year and look at the new year coming in. As Josie and Dang explained just now, Sankran comes from a Sanskrit word, means Sankranti, which means to move or to change. We're moving into the new year, and the question is, what do we want to change? There's a lot of water pouring that's going to happen today, and that's symbolic of what we'd like to have the day. Mark, which is a washing away of some of our old bad habits, so we can start the year with a clean slate. But of course, water on its own is not going to wash away your unskillful habits. As the texts say, that if water could wash away your evil habits, then all the fishes and crocodiles and everything else would go straight to heaven. They're in water all the time. The real way that you cleanse the mind, the real way that you cleanse yourself, is through observing the precepts. The precepts against killing and stealing, illicit sex. The precepts against wrong speech, lying, divisive speech, harsh speech, idle chatter. And then there's also the principles of, about right thought, the kinds of wrong thinking you want to avoid. Thinking involved with greed, thinking involved with ill will, and thinking that takes on wrong views, such as the view that your actions don't make any difference, so it doesn't really matter what you do. Actually, your actions are the most important things in your life, and it's through your actions that you cleanse yourself, particularly in the precepts around speech. Of all the precepts dealing with the body and speech, the speech ones are the easiest to break, and we tend to be breaking them all the time. So you have to be very careful about that. You want to make up your mind, you may want to make up your mind this year, that you're going to be especially careful about how you speak. Because you look at the world around us, and so much of the world, so much of the killing and stealing comes from wrong speech. People say things that upset other people, so people lie to other people. People try to speak in divisive ways. People get divided against one another, and then they can do all sorts of horrible things. This is why of all the precepts the Buddha said that the first one, the one against lying, is the most important. And the principles of right speech are the ways by which you cleanse yourself and cleanse the environment around you. So you look at your speech. Are there any ways in which you tell even just little lies to other people, just to get them off your back, just to hide little things from yourself, hide little things from them? But if you let yourself give in to that kind of wrong speech, then it's easier for, one, on the one hand, bigger lies to come out, and two, it's very easy for people not to trust you. And if a world is built around mistrust like this, how can we live in peace? So the first thing you want to make sure is that you don't tell any lies. Now, there will come times when there's information you don't want to divulge because it's going to be harmful to somebody. But you can figure out ways to get around that without lying. You want to make a vow to yourself that whatever comes out of your mouth is, as far as you know, it's in line with the facts. That way your speech becomes more trustworthy and it becomes a basis for more peace in the world around you. The same with the principle against divisive speech. You don't want to speak in ways that divide people against one another. You want to speak in ways that bring about harmony. And it's so easy to say the divisive things. You turn on the TV, you turn on the radio, to look in the internet, and there's all kinds of divisive speech going on. People refuse to talk to one another. 
So maybe we can't change the media quite yet, but at least in your media world, you want to speak in ways that create more friendship. There may be times we need to warn somebody against somebody else who actually is unskillful in his intentions. But you have to be very careful with yourself. What is your intention in saying things like that? You feel it really is for the other person's protection? Okay, that may be one thing, but you have to be very careful about that. So you don't speak in ways that are divisive. As for harsh speech, which is speech meant to hurt people's feelings, again, that is so easy to say. And feelings, once they're hurt like that, are very hard to heal. You want to speak in ways that are soothing, in ways that are encouraging other people. There are times when you have to speak strongly, especially to your children when they're misbehaving. But again, you want to make sure you're speaking out of using a strong language out of goodwill rather than ill will. As the Buddha said, when you test your speech, it should be first, is this true? And if it's true, then the next question should be, is this beneficial? And if it's beneficial, then the third question should be, is this the right time to say pleasing things or displeasing things? But again, that, that comes from wisdom. It doesn't come from just speaking on the impulse. And finally, there's a, the precept against idle chatter. It's not really a precept, but it's a teaching that you just try to avoid chatter that just doesn't have any purpose at all, doesn't have any meaning at all. Just kind of opening your mouth and what, letting whatever is in there come out. Because all too often, when you open your mouth too much like that, then other kinds of wrong speech will come out as well. You want to make sure that when you open your mouth to speak, you have a clear intention about what you want to accomplish with your speech. And it's this way that you really cleanse yourself. You can wash your mouth with water all day long, and it's not really clean. What really cleans the mouth is right speech. So as we move into the new, the new year, make sure you look at what in the past year you've done that's right and you want to maintain, and look at what things you've done in the past that were not right that you want to change. This is a good time to change. Every day, of course, is a good time to change, but the new year helps give you a sense of having completed something and put it behind you, and embarking on something new. So you might want to make up your mind that this year is the year you're going to focus on your speech, so that even though you may not be able to prevent the discord you see in the world outside, away from you, at least you try to create peace in your corner of the world. Try to create harmony in your corner of the world. Because this opportunity we have to be born as human beings, as you can see, it's slipping away, slipping away. On the one hand, we see when we've reached a new year and it's something of an accomplishment, but also you look at your body, it's getting older. For some people, that's you're on the rising arc as you age, and as you age you're seeing that you can do more and more things, you have more capabilities. But for a lot of us, we've passed that, the peak, and now we're on the way down. So each year it marks the loss of this, the loss of that. But make sure you don't lose your virtue. Make sure that, or at least you can keep your virtue and keep it clean. Make the most of the fact that we have this human life, as it slips away, slips away, which you can keep with you. And what really is your possession are the good things you've done, the good karma you've done. That sticks with you regardless. So you've got the opportunity today and on into the future to make sure that your thoughts, words, and deeds are really clean. And then whether there's water splashed and no water splashed, doesn't matter, you're clean. Especially now that as the drought is approaching and they're beginning to cut down on the use of water outside. You want to make sure that you use your internal water here to keep your hands and your body and your, your mouth and all parts of the body that you're using as clean as possible. <laughs>